the intensification of disasters, whether it be in the Philippines or it be in India, is no longer a natural phenomena. These are man-made disasters linked to the way we have destabilized the climate by pumping carbon dioxide, nitrogen oxide, methane way be beyond the capacity of the earth to recycle these chemicals. But most importantly, these disasters are a result of a maldevelopment model that have made our ecosystems and our communities more vulnerable to every flood, every drought, and every typhoon, and every cyclone. You have had a terrible disaster this year in India in 2013. We had the worst flooding imaginable in my region of the Himalaya. We are the land where the Ganges originates. We are the land of the sacred rivers. Every river has at its source a shrine to the river. We have treated our rivers as sacred. We have treated the sources of the rivers as pilgrim sites. But a maldevelopment model has reduced these pilgrim sites to crass commercial hubs of tourism, mass tourism. And the global climate change is melting our glaciers on the 16th and 17th of June. We had rained 365% higher than normal because the glaciers were anyway melting, a glacial lake had been forced, formed which burst, the Churabari Lake above the Kedarnath. And then as the flood waters flew down, the hydroelectric projects and the instability they had introduced aggravated the fury of the river, carrying the debris, leveling out fields and roads and villages and towns. 20,000 people died. Where does this thinking come from? That we can manipulate nature, we can manipulate genes, we can manipulate ecosystems with no consequence. I believe it comes from the error made at the time of the scientific revolution to match it to the rising industrial revolution and an economics based on greed and greed alone. That scientific revolution redefine nature from being living, from being self-organizing, from being a living Mother Earth, Gaia, to being just dead matter, to be manipulated and exploited for profit. The Earth was turned from terra madre to dead matter. And that was the basis of the conquest that is now reaching its limits where the living earth is repeatedly telling us, I am alive, you can be my children, I will nurture you and take care of you for millennia as I have for all beings on the earth. But if you think you can trample on my very being, then in one minute I can show you my power to wipe out the single species that is becoming a planetary threat. We need to see disasters in the language of a living and speaking earth and we need to listen to her. Every instrument of technological development, of progress, of economic development that we have created is an instrument of violence. And interestingly, their intensification took place during the war. We've all done agroecological farming. The diversity of agriculture in the Philippines and India has sustained our societies for thousands of years. And then we got the Green Revolution with rice and wheat. But it was really about chemicals, chemicals that were laid surplus after the wars. The nitrogen fertilizers that came from explosive factories, the pesticides that had been used first in the concentration camps and later in wars. 
These became the ingredients of the Green Revolution. War technologies became food production technologies. And look at the GDP, the gross domestic product, which is what is used to justify every destruction of sustainable economies and sustainable societies, of living ecosystems and living economies. The GDP was created for the war, to mobilize financial resources, to buy equipment, bombs, fighter jets, to expand armies. And the definition of GDP is if you produce what you consume, you don't produce. So nature doesn't produce. Communities don't produce. A war machine reproduces. The GDP, which should have been wrapped up after the war, the chemicals that should have been wrapped up after the war, have continued to declare war on the planet. And that is why we have these disasters. They are indirectly a war against the planet. And we have to stop this war. How do we stop this war? We stop this war by recognizing the living earth, recognizing that every cell is alive and self-organized, recognizing that every plant and every species is self-organized and has a right to live in dignity, a right to live in freedom and evolve into the future in freedom, that every ecosystem has integrity, every culture has integrity and that these integrities set the terms of the interaction of humans with other species and ecosystems. That means we need to shift from the dead matter assumption of a reductionist Cartesian science to a living systems recognition, a recognition that is coming from every new discipline of science. The fact that everything is connected, nothing is separable. For example, quantum theory tells us that the Newtonian mechanics was so wrong in being based on separation and immutable particles. Everything is changing. Everything is connected. I did my doctoral thesis on non-separability in quantum theory. That is how the world functions as a web of life. Epigenetics is telling us there are no fixed genes like atoms of determinism. We are waking up to the complexity of a self-organized universe. And the minute we recognize that there will be peace with the earth. As far as the GDP is concerned and indicators of growth are concerned that are destroying economies in the name of creating economic progress, we just have to look at that tiny little country in the Himalaya, Bhutan, which said we will not measure GDP. We will measure gross national happiness and well-being because GDP measures nothing but destruction. We now need to start measuring how to ensure the well-being of our ecosystems, our community and the members of the community. Everywhere people are being laid waste. Everywhere future generations are losing hope. Everywhere ecosystems are losing their ability to be resilient. We need a paradigm shift, a mind shift. A mind shift from being conquerors and controllers of the earth and her species and her resources to being co-inhabitants with other species on this planet. We need to shift from the mentality of war to making peace with the earth. Most importantly, we need to shift to being co-creators and co-producers so that while conserving the earth, while enhancing her resilience, we also improve our own well-being. The evidence is there for us to see all round. Let us turn these disasters into lessons of making the transition to living better by using less, by living more freely, by controlling less, by having more, by giving more. These are the practices that have sustained human societies over millennia. They can guarantee our future over millennia into the future. Or we can be stupid, irresponsible, greedy and guarantee our own extinction as a species.